Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and I am so glad you could join us this morning. It is wonderful to be able to spend this time together. My goal every day is to just help you get your day off to a great start by spending some time in the Word of God and in prayer. And so, together, every morning, we read one chapter of Scripture. Now, yesterday, we finished up the Gospel of Mark. And so we've been kind of alternating between some of Paul's letters and the various gospels so that we hear the gospel stories spread out over time. And so today we're going back into the letters of Paul. We had left off uh, at the end of 2 Corinthians. And so now we are jumping into Galatians. And so if you have the time today, my hope is that you will read the whole of Galatians chapter 1. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a portion of that. We'll look at verses 13 through 17. So if you have a Bible handy or you want to pull it up on your phone, I invite you to join me in Galatians chapter 1, beginning in verse 13. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my father. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, my immediate response was not to consult any human being. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus. What we have in this section of Paul's first chapter of Galatians is essentially his story of calling. Part of that calling was his invitation, his calling to follow Jesus, to become a Christ follower. And Paul readily admits that he had opposed the gospel. For much of his recent years, he had been in opposition to those who were followers of Christ. He had done all that he could to persecute the church. He even had letters that allowed him to go to other cities and arrest and drive, drag Christians back to Jerusalem for trial. He did all that he could to harm the movement of Jesus Christ. Prior to knowing Christ, Paul's life was headed in a very different direction direction. I mean, he was a faithful person in his own eyes. He was zealous for the law. And because he believed that it was through obedience to the law that he was faithful, that's how he lived. He lived his life to be obedient to the law. And that's what he understood to be faithfulness to God. But Not only did he make sure that he was faithful to the law, but he did all that he could to persecute those who, in his mind, were not. Unfortunately, that put him in direct opposition to the followers of the way, to those who accepted Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, those who were trying to advance the gospel of Christ. But one day, God broke through that hard exterior and Paul's life was transformed. He was made new in Christ. This transformation uh, brought about by his Damascus Road experience not only led him to Christ, it revealed to him a new calling, a new purpose for his life. His work was now no longer to be persecuting the followers of Christ and undermining the work of the gospel. 
Now his calling was to follow Christ and to advance the gospel, the good news of Jesus. Honestly, there could not have been a more dramatic transformation. He went from being the church's greatest enemy to being its greatest evangelist. How does that happen? How is someone transformed so dramatically in such a short time? For Paul, it happened through an encounter with Jesus. If you know the story, you know that as he was on this road to Damascus preparing to arrest Christians, there is this great light that shines from the sky that literally blinds Paul. And then he hears the voice of God speak to him. He says, Saul, Saul, in the voice, why do you persecute me? And Paul, Saul asks him, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And in that moment, in that encounter, Paul's life is literally transformed. Our God is a God of transformation. We may not all be living lives that are absolute opposition to the work of Christ the way that Paul was, but I have known many who were living lives that were taking them in a very different direction until they had their encounter with Christ. Now, some people's journey of transformation can be gradual, but sometimes it is sudden and dramatic. And if we will allow him to, Jesus can transform our lives as well. And sometimes he'll do it in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in just a moment of experience. In that moment of transformation, he can give us a fresh start, a new beginning, a calling that gives our lives meaning and purpose beyond anything we've ever known. And so I just wanna ask you today, are you ready for God to do something new and exciting in your life? Open up to him. Let the Holy Spirit move in your heart and see what God can do. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this story of Paul's transformation. And it reminds us, God, that you are able to transform any of us. You can, you can bring just amazing, beautiful, miraculous change into our lives. You can give us a fresh calling. You can give us a new beginning, Lord. You can give us a, a purpose in life beyond anything we've ever known. And so I pray that for myself, Lord, and I pray that for all of us who are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.